So we've pretty much reached the end of the line of this section. So what we're going to do in this video is that we're going to summarize all that we've learned in this section so far, and then we're, we're going to take what we've learned and then we're going to construct the ground state of the electron in a hydrogen atom. So let's try to summarize what we know so far. So recall that our ultimate goal throughout all these videos is to ultimately uh, derive the value of xi of r theta phi. And then we know that this function xi is equal to the radial component multiplied by the angular component. So this angular component is given by the spherical harmonics. And then each solution is indexed by three numbers. So n is a number that can take on any one of these, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. So it could be any one of the natural numbers. L is a number that can be equal to 0, 1, 2, and it can range all the way to n minus 1. And then L is a number that came from the spherical harmonics, and it is also related to the radial component. And then there's a third number, m, the magnetic quantum number, that can range from 0, plus minus 1, plus minus 2, all the way to plus minus L. And this is a number that comes from the spherical harmonics. So each solution xi is indexed by these three numbers, so you can choose a, any combination of these three as long as they satisfy their respective restrictions, and then you will get a different solution for every different choice. And then we know that this, y, uh, this angular component is given by the spherical harmonics, and then we know that for the electron in the hydrogen atom, the radial component, this expression over here, we have found through much effort in the last few videos that this is equal to 1 over r times u of y, where y is, don't forget, it's given by this expression, is equal to kr, where k itself is equal to negative 2me divided by h bar. And then there is actually a different way to express y. Uh, so we can recall that we also found the expression for the energy levels in the last video. And if you take that expression and substitute it in, you will see that y can also be written as r divided by aum. And then this a is a shorthand for this collection of symbols. And uh, this is what we call the uh, Bohr radius. So this is another value that Niels Bohr was able to produce in his model of the hydrogen atom. So this is just a shorthand for all these symbols. So you can take the, the formula for the energy levels that we found in the last video and substitute it in. You'll see that you will indeed get this expression. And you can see that this is indexed by n as well. So for every different choice of n, your y is going to be different. So there's an n over here. So back to this, our radial component is equal to this expression. And then we we know that our u of y is given by y to the power of l plus 1 e to the power of negative y times v of y, where v of y is going to be a special expression that is going to be equal to this sum of uh, this summation uh, expression over here. And then the constants within this expression will be related to one another by this recursion formula. So this is the recursion formula that we've been working with in the last two videos. J plus 2L plus 2CJ. And then, so this is how you can construct your V of Y. And then for every choice of N, don't forget we also have a corresponding allowed energy level. So this is what we derived last time in the last video. And as I've mentioned before, this is a very special result because this is the exact same formula that Niels Bohr was able to obtain in his, uh, in his uh, own model of the hydrogen atom. So we know all this information, we have all these formulas, so let's try to apply some of these formulas in a specific example. So what we're going to do now is that we're going to deal with the ground state of the electron. So we're going to deal with the case where n is equal to 1, l is equal to 0, and n is equal to 0. So for this case, this is going to be the ground state. So first of all, when n is equal to 1, you can see that this will be the case for the lowest energy level. So for larger values of 1, the energy level will increase. So don't forget there's a negative sign over here. And so for n is equal to 1, this would correspond to the case for, uh, where we have the lowest energy level. And then for the other two values, L and M, you can see that based on their restrictions imposed here, if n is equal to 1, the only allowed values for L and M are 0. So it's uh, so L equal to 0 and M equal to 0 are the only choices. If you have a larger value of n, let's say n is equal to 4, 
you have greater freedom on what L and M could be. So you can see that when L when N is equal to a larger number, let's say four, uh, there are obviously less restrictions on L and M, so you can have different combinations. But for the ground state, L and M can only be equal to zero. So what we're going to do now is that we're going to construct xi one zero zero r theta phi. So we're going to use all the information that we've obtained here to try to construct our solution. So don't forget this is equal to the uh, to the radial component, which is equal to r one zero r multiplied by the angular component y zero zero theta phi. And then uh, in the previous section, in one of the problems from the previous section, on the section on the spherical harmonics, I actually, I've actually already derived this expression. So I'm not going to spend too much time on this expression. I'm just going to give you the answer, because this section is actually just is actually devoted to the radial component and not the spherical harmonics. So I'm just going to give you the answer for this. And for y0, 0, this is going to be 1 over the square root of 4 pi. So we know that our uh, the ground state is going to be equal to 1 over the square root of 4 pi times r10 r. So now we shift our focus on this. Now we're going to set our sights on finding r10. So r10 is going to be equal to, what we're going to do is that we're going to take this formula. And so what we're going to get is 1 over r, and then we have y to the power of l plus 1. l is equal to 0, so we just have y and then we have e to the power of negative y, and then we have v of y. And so don't forget that our y can also be expressed in such a way, so r divided by an, and in our case we're dealing with the ground state, where n is equal to 1, so we're just going to have r divided by a. So y is going to be equal to r divided by a. So don't forget a is equal to the ball radius. So now I can rewrite everything like this, so y is equal to r divided by a, e to the power of negative r over a. And I can use, uh, so I can substitute an r over a here uh, for the v of y, but I'm just going to keep it uh, keep it as v of y for now. And so we have something like this. So now what we need to do now is to find what v of y should be. And then we're going to do that by using these two expressions over here. So what we want to do now is to find v of y. And then let's just write this out one more time. v of y is equal to... Uh, this expression. And then in order to find our v of y, we need to find these constants. And in order to find these constants, we can make use of this recursion formula. So v of y is going to be equal to c0 plus c1y1 plus c1, c2y square all the way to infinity. And then we're going to start with some value of c0, and then we're going to use the recursion formula to keep getting new values of c, uh, uh, c1, c2, c3 until we reach uh, a stopping point where the where all the subsequent constants are going to be equal to zero. So for some value of c0, we don't know what this is. So for some value of c0, what is c1 going to be? So going back to this recursion formula, you can see that c1 is going to be equal to this expression times c0, so times c0. And in the numerator, you have 2 times j. So j is going to correspond to this index over here. And we're dealing with c0, so j is going to be equal to zero. And then we're dealing with the ground state where L is equal to 0, so we have plus 0. And then we have plus 1. And for the ground state, N is equal to 1, so we have minus 1. And so you can see that the numerator, this expression, is just 1 minus 1, so it's actually equal to 0. So we don't even need to worry about what the denominator is. So this whole thing is just going to be 2 times 0 times C0. So this C1 is equal to 0. So you can see that the chain of coefficients immediately stop after the first one. So now we know that all the subsequent constants they are all going to be 0. And so that means our v of y is going to be just one constant, c0. So now going back to this, we can see that all we have to do is just to put c0 over here, because our v of y is just one constant. And so this is a very important result. So we're almost done with our derivation. So you can see that our r10 is equal to this expression. And let's briefly summarize what we have so far. And so you can see that our function xi, which is what we're looking for, is going to be equal to c0 divided by a times e to the power of negative r divided by a times the spherical harmonics, so times 1 over square root of 4 pi. So now you might ask, 
what exactly is the, is this c0? So we only said c0 is some constant, and then using this constant, we were we able to derive the rest. But what exactly is c0? So we can obtain c0 by normalizing this function. So what that means is that we're going to restrict this integral to be equal to 1. So that's what we've been doing so far in the entire book. This is how quantum mechanics works. So don't forget we're dealing with spherical harmonics, so the differential is equal to r squared sine theta dr d theta d phi. And in the range, uh, r goes from 0 to infinity, uh, theta goes from 0 to pi, and then phi goes from 0 to 2 pi. So by integrating this expression, we will be able to deduce what this c0 would be by restricting this result to be equal to 1. And then first of all, uh, notice that this xi term over here, remember that this is actually just a combination of the radial component and the spherical component, uh, the angular component. And then both of these components are uh, normalized respectively. So this is normalized, and this, is, this also should be normalized. So we can actually break this up, this integral up into two parts. So we're going to break this integral up into the section that is related only to r, and then a second integral that is related only to theta and phi. So we have sine theta, d theta, d phi. And since both of these components are should be normalized respectively, this term over here is going to be equal to 1. So I forgot the square. So this component here is going to be equal to 1. So we can actually just completely ignore this. And if you don't believe me, you can just take this number 1 over 4 pi and substitute it and do the integral. You will see that this is going to be equal to 1. And this is going to be true for all your other spherical harmonics, not just for y0, 0. For, so for any other combination of L and M, you're also going to get 1. So you can see that all we have to do is to focus on this integral. So let's now deal with this integral. So 1 is equal to 0 to infinity, and r squared times the absolute value square of your radial component. And we found that the radial component is equal to this expression, so let's just substitute that in. So we have c naught squared divided by a squared times e to the power of negative ra dr. And of course I can just isolate these constants and you can see that we all we have to do with is this rather simple integral. So I don't want to spend too much time on this integral. You can solve this using uh, integration by parts. I'm not going to go through that over here. Uh, one way you can reason your way to the answer is that you can use uh, integration by substitution and then you will get something like this. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to let u be equal to 2r divided by a, and then if you apply the substitution, you'll get this extra term outside, and you have u squared times e to the power of negative u du, and then this is actually the integral that represents the so-called gamma function, and then this is actually going to be equal to 2 factorial. So all we have to do now is just to substitute that result in. So if you don't know what the gamma function is and you don't like using this method, of course you can always use integration by parts to solve this. And then you have a divided by 2 to the power of 3 times 2 factorial. So of course now we can cancel out some of the terms here. So this becomes a to the power of 1. And then this is, uh, we have a 2 to the power of 3 and there's a 2 over here. So we only have 2 to the power of 2. So in the end you see that c naught squared is going to be equal to so a divided by 4. So c naught is going to be equal to 2 divided by the square root of a. And so there we have it. So now taking this value, we can finally construct our solution. So r10 r is going to be equal to uh, c naught divided by c naught divided by <coughs> c naught divided by a, this expression over here. So that means 2 divided by the square root of a times 1 over a times e to the power of negative ra. And we can make this look nicer by combining the terms. And so this is what we're going to get for the radial component. And so now ultimately our final step is to combine everything together. So now we can take the radial component and then multiply it by the angular component, which, as you remember, is equal to 1 over the square root of 4 pi. 
and then of course this and this can cancel out. So in the end, you get this nice clean expression. And so there you have it. This is the final result. This is going to be the ground state.